Very true. Today on the show, it's Pitfall, The Lost Expedition, Alias, Jack the Ripper, and in Versus, we're getting dirty with MTX Motor Tracks against MX Unleashed. First game we're going to talk about is Pitfall, The Lost Expedition. This is from Activision for the GameCube, but it's also available for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. They've gone in a little bit of a different direction this time. They have a, a more animated, sort of cartoony look to Pitfall, Harry. And I got to say, I think I like that direction that they took. Me you know, too. You, you don't want to go realistic, you know, splinter cell graphics with, with <laughs> Pitfall, Harry. No. You know what was weird, though, about the cartoon style of this guy? He actually, he's only got three fingers. That's true. Which I thought was a little bit strange. He's supposed to be a human. What do you need more than three for? Well, it, Mickey Mouse, three R fingers. Ratchet and Clank, four fingers no, and no. a thumb. That's He's got, five. Uh, no, thumbs aren't fingers. Says who? How, how many fingers you have? I have four fingers no, on each hand. See, no I one eight. says that. And, no. and two thumbs. No, you have five fingers on each hand. All right. They keep to all the basic stuff really well. The Still controls. swinging on vines. He's jumping yeah, on alligators. But they do a lot of great, unique stuff. The controls and the yes. dynamics in the game. Even when you're in the levels, oh, there's butterflies and there's little frogs jumping around. I and, love that all the jungle plants move when you run yeah. through. Yeah. And, and even when you're swinging on the vines, it's not just back and forth like every other video game. You can actually move around on the vine in a 3D space. You don't see a lot. However, that also leads to some collision problems, and there are some things where you'll miss a vine because you can't get the camera angle just perfectly right, or you'll, you'll hit the edge of a platform and slip off. I like the humor in the thing, too. Those little good. monkeys you'll whack around. The monkeys are and, awesome. Yeah, monkeys I mean, there's... always rule in video games. They should put a monkey in high heat baseball. We should have a monkey. Then we do. We kind of do. Yeah, me. The other thing that's cool about the monkeys in this game is that they're extremely noisy. You'll run up to a bunch right. of them, they'll be sleeping, but if you wake them up, they start wailing and howling. And I like whacking them. It's, it's yeah, really funny stuff. The monkeys. But the thing is, if you have too many monkeys to punch, yes. it's out of control. The, the loudness of everybody screaming, you just want to... Then you just want to spank the monkeys. You want to spank those monkeys. The alligators are really cool because you have to jump on a lot of the, you know, jump on their backs to get to areas. They will chase you around. They are vicious. They, they will come vicious. out and, and get you. But even when you, they have you in their mouth, you can use the left analog stick to try to get out of their grasp. I love that. I like that you have to collect all the idols or all you see all these glowing idols all over the place and you can use them as the currency in the game to upgrade your character a little bit, give them some extra health, pick up some new abilities. Right. There's all kinds of collectible items in there. You pick up a torch so you can burn spider webs. That's you right. You pick up a gas mask so you can go through these gaseous plant stages. You get a slingshot. That was one problem I had with the game, though, is that I, I, I hate games that where you're going through a level. Yeah. And, and then, then it's they like block a, it off. There's like a spider web thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, you have to go collect something first. There is a ton and of And then come in back. Game. Give me new levels. G give me the torch. What I did like, though, is that the levels are all interconnected. It's not like you beat an area and then you're loading to another area. The actual gameplay feels linear like Crash Bandicoot, but the world is large and interconnected. Really good VO. I thought that I, the voice acting I, I was pretty it, good. And I like the writing, although it's not nearly as funny as stuff that I was listening to in Jack 2, and they also mixed the voiceovers, I thought, kind of poorly. What are you doing? Turning on the charm. This is my medium set. Oh. Charm's getting to you, huh? They had a talking jaguar in the game, and the minute that that happened, it kind of Lost, lost it for Yeah, you. a little bit of that Indiana Jones coolness sort of went away. I'm giving it 8 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9. On the positive side, although this is a very familiar style of game, they do a lot of cool, unique things. The cartoony graphics are extremely well done, and the sound effects are really good, especially the howling monkeys. On the negative side, when you have too many of those monkeys, it gives you a headache. There's tons of backtracking in the game. And what's the deal with Harry only having three fingers? Now we're going to move from monkey punching and adventuring in the jungle to being a secret super spy. This is Alias from Acclaim, 
We looked at it on the PlayStation 2, but it's also available for the Xbox. What'd you think of this one? Jennifer Garner's outfits <laughs> in this game. Definitely steal the show. Especially in level one. You're posing as a waitress. Amazing. I gotta say that that was the best female video game outfit, aside from the Venus bathing suit on Dead or Alive right. Extreme Beach Volleyball yes. that I've ever seen. When she does those high leg kicks and those small skirts, right. let me tell you about it. <laughs> Fanny Good times. <laughs> Good times. Do you watch the show? Because I'm a huge fan of Aliens. I'm going to start. She dresses really? like that in every show. Wow. It's fabulous. And, and the show is right. awesome, too. Great writing, great acting. And what's awesome is this game loaded with all the same heart and soul that's in the TV show. You get all the actors. You get screenwriting that comes from the, the people. I'd like to point out that the guy who does the music for the television show is a guy by the name of Michael Giacchino. Now, right. Michael Giacchino, talk about full circle, is a video game composer, that's one right. of the best video game composers, as a matter of fact. So the deal is you're playing as Sidney Bristow, which is Jennifer uh, Garner's character in the show. And she is battling Anna Espinosa and Sark and Sloan. Sark? And Mr. Sark. From he's, Tron? No, no, he's Tron? From, from Alias. He's not from Tron. Oh. They're all bad, evil people. Well, and, Sark was bad in Tron. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Maybe they ripped that off. A little homage. So you got all the characters in there. You've got Marshall, who gives you the op tech in the game, which is very cool. All these really Is Sheriff? No, he's the gadget guy. And you have Dixon, who is an awesome What's character he in the show. He's, he's like... Uh, the partner to, to, to Sydney. Then there's Michael Vaughn, who's like the love interest from the show. You actually get to play him in one of the levels of the game. Now he gets to grope Jennifer. Is yeah, that... in, in the show, that that's his job on the show. They need a grope button in this game. And then Sydney Bristow's father gives you all the mission briefings and stuff like that and tells you what you have to do. So you get all the voice cast in there, which is great. The faces in this game yep. are some of the best faces I have seen on a console this game. game. Means good face. One of the most innovative things in the game is they actually have this split screen system in place so that you can be in a scene and you're like setting up a modem or something and then all of a sudden the music will chant up and you'll have a, another screen pop up and you'll see two guards that are walking close by. I like the fact that the, that, that they're always, because, you know, they're always kind of in, in her ear, so yeah. you always have a pretty good idea of what you yes. have to do and what your very missions simple, are. Very simple, very simple. Which thing. I like. Maybe too a, much so. Way too much. And the other thing, too, is they have save points every five feet in this game. <laughs> I, in the first mission, I saved 30 times. The motion captured animations are cool. You can do all these moves where you're knocking guys Lots down. Lots of headbutts. Lots of headbutts. But it's all uninterruptible. So you get into this motion captured sort of maneuver and you're stuck until it's finished. So you might be right. facing the wrong way. Yeah. People are beating up on you from the side. Like the Dark Angel game before it, you know, yeah. it's just, you know, it paid good homage. To, to that, the show, yes, and uh, work. you know, but but it wasn't you know super spectacular. It was definitely above average. I'm giving it a 7.5. I'm gonna give it a seven. On the positive side, this game has good face. All the voices and actors from the show are in this game. The music from the show is in this game, and as Vic said, they really pay homage to the whole license. On the negative side, the motion-captured animations aren't interruptible, so sometimes you get stuck in a pattern. And I was really disappointed that if you alert the guards or set off an alarm, you're really not penalized. Hey, stick around. We're going to be right back with a look at Jack the Ripper for the PC. You get our point. I didn't write that. <laughs> Hey, I'm out here at Piccadilly Circus, and I'm having a Looney time with Looney Tunes back in action. This one's from Electronic Arts for the Game Boy Advance. And I got to say, I'm a little disappointed. This is just not as much fun as I thought it would be. I like the uh, console versions of this game, but for the Game Boy Advance, it, everything feels a little bit cheap. You can play as Bugs or Daffy, and you run into all of the Looney Tunes characters that you would want to see. Basically what you're doing, same thing as in the console. You're after the Blue Monkey Diamond but you have to catch all of these Warner Brothers executives that have been turned into monkeys, which is kind of funny. My real problem with the game is that the controls are crap. You never really get a sense of taking ownership of these characters because you don't know where you're supposed to be heading and you can't point your guy in the right direction. It's almost like they made a Pac-Man style maze game with eight direction controls. So you're constantly pivoting your character around and it's just way too confusing. It's just too bad. I'm a big fan of the Looney Tunes characters, and I liked what EA did with them on the consoles. But on the Game Boy Advance, this is pretty boring, pretty mediocre. 4.5 out of 10.
Okay, we're back. We're going to talk now about Jack the Ripper. It's from the Adventure Company for the PC. What would you think of this? This game is one of these 3D games that you don't actually move in the 3D world. Right. You just point and click. It's kind of like a slideshow, this game. Like Mist. Sure. But not as good. Correct. It takes the Jack the Ripper kind of mythology and transports it a little bit. It basically takes the premise that Jack the Ripper transferred over to New York after he wasn't caught for his murders in London. And Completely all, fictitious. Yeah, it's all fictitious because nobody knows what happened to Jack the Ripper in reality. I do. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, he, he went was on one of to, your descendants, he wasn't went, he? He went on to host a video game show. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's the early 20th century in New York City all of these murders start happening for all of these ladies of the night and the press starts going rabid thinking that Jack the Ripper has come to New York City. You play a, an up-and-coming reporter who gets a, the, the scent of a story here and you have to trail around the city talking to all kinds of people trying to figure out where Jack the Ripper is and, and solve the murders and, and print a big cool story about it. Some parts of the game create a very good ambiance. You know, they have the, like the sound design is kind of eerie and, and spooky. I like the places. singer. Actually, the singer was pretty yeah. cool. They, all these uh, sort of Irish type songs, really nice stuff right? in there. The, and the other thing as well is they had this freaky crow that would show oh. up at the at the death scenes all yes. the time. And the, the game would do this really weird thing, like it would zoom into its eye and it like kind of... Very so effective. There was some, definitely some, some areas there and some effects that they were pulling off. They kind of creeped you out. The problem here, of course, who wants to play a game like this anymore these days? Well, I think it's kind of cool to get into the narrative a little bit, but the problem is that's all that this game is. It's just talking to people and figuring things out from the conversations. There's not really a whole bunch of adventure-style gameplay. It's supposed no. to be an adventure game, but there's no puzzles really to figure out. Right. I kind of like some of the details in the game, like there's a Harry Houdini poster on the yes, wall. Yes, that was cool. And, and you can see all part. these old newspaper things, and, and you've got like a wall-eyed editor that sends you out, and he's barking you out, all kinds of stuff. I thought the voice acting was well done. Yes. The problem was, technically, a lot of the voices kept cutting out. Sometimes you, you sort of hit a dead end, and you can't go anywhere else, and you have to backtrack, and then you come back, and then you can go somewhere else. I like the fact, though, that they created a, a day and night sort of map for every one of the different areas that you visit. And there's some, some pretty comedic things as well. Like, you'll be at a theater, and they'll kick you out of the theater and tell you you can't come back unless you get a good review printed in the newspaper. I, I'm going to give this game a 5.5. I'm giving Jack the Stripper a 4.5. Uh, it's Ripper. Ripper? Yeah. Oh, Ripper. On the positive side, the ambiance in this game is quite cool. The voice acting is actually very good. And as my homeboy Tommy says, you got some freaky crow action going on. On the negative side, although the environments are in 3D, it's more like a slideshow. There's bugs in some of the navigation and the voiceovers. And for me, there just wasn't enough puzzles. It seemed like all you were doing was uncovering the storyline. Hey, we've got a very cool hardware idea here for you that's not just for gaming. You can use it as a very useful thing in your house as well or in your office. This is the Netgear wall-plugged Ethernet bridge. It's actually a couple of little devices. You need at least two for this thing to work. And you plug them into your regular outlets. You plug one in and you have an Ethernet cable going into your console or your computer or your toaster, whatever you want online. Ethernet basically. toaster? Those are awesome. I yeah. love online toasters. And then on the other side, you have your cable modem or a router. And then any one of these adapters, and if you buy any more of them, every wall outlet in your home is set up to have internet connection. I'm like, how does this technology work? I still don't understand it. You plug it into the wall, and then your whole house is now wired through your outlets with internet. And the great thing is it's even a faster connection, almost double, than if you had wireless. Each it's one of the little wall plugged units costs about 70 bucks US, which right. is pretty reasonable. You do have to install a little software on your computer, but it, trust me, it takes five minutes and it recognizes every single unit that gets plugged in, so it's a good you know, barometer for if the thing's working correctly or not. Very solid deal. Completely recommended for anyone out there looking to expand. Very cool. I'm recommending it as well. On the positive side, for what this thing does, it's pretty affordable. It's very easy to set up. You just plug it in the wall, install a little software. And the speed on it is actually higher than wireless. On the negative side, unlike wireless, if you wanted to add internet to every room in your house, you have to keep buying wall plug adapters. 
Stick around. When we come back, it's the battle of the motocross games. MTX versus MX Unleashed. After this. Steel rain for the PlayStation. Wow. Steel rain for the PlayStation. Uh, I mean, this... I, I can't believe I'm seeing this game in 1997. Yeah, I know. I mean, this game um, is not well done. I know. Um, it's choppy. It's very choppy. <laughs> Next review. It is, uh, it, you know, it doesn't compare to Warhawk or Twisted Metal. That's here in 1995. Yeah. And yeah. The, uh, yeah, the missions are cool. The tanks are cool. The graphics could have been way better. Way and, better. Uh, the control is ridiculous. Uh, four out of ten. The frames of animation were, like, non-existent. I mean, this game was so choppy. Yeah. I, I had choppy. Choppy. Choppy is the key word. With this choppy. Game. Exactly. Yeah. I thought the coolest part in the whole game was there's fences, and I'm in a tank, and I can run over the fences. Yeah. Really but choppy. I give it a six out of ten. Six is being generous, man. Hey, we're here at EB Games, and uh, look what I found. I think we found a future buried treasure. You think that the N-Gage will ever be a buried treasure down the road? No, I doubt it. Uh, but I did find one that really is a buried treasure. This is Colony Wars for the PlayStation 1. This is one of my favorite space shooters of all time. They did an amazing job with this game. Really great sense of being in this beautiful, detailed, colored space environment. I mean, the, there's all kinds of particle effects and ships blowing up all over the place. You see beautiful space vistas, dust clouds, and lots of different colored planets and stars shooting by you in all different places. The cutscenes, very cinematic. Love the music, love the narration. And the game was developed by Cygnosis, who had a string of really cool looking games on the PlayStation 1. They did Wipeout, and uh, they published Destruction Derby, and a bunch of other really cool titles. Very, very well-defined storytelling throughout the game as well. It really sucks you into this thing. You could easily see Colony Wars as a movie, no problem. This is a great game. Go check it out for your PlayStation 1. It's called Colony Wars. And remember, this will still play on your PlayStation 2. Hey, we've got a tough one today in Versus. We've got two cool motocross games, MTX Moto Tracks from Activision for all three consoles versus MX Unleashed from THQ for the Xbox or PlayStation 2. We looked at both of these games on the Xbox. What did you think of the graphics for these two titles? Well, I mean, I thought they were pretty comparable. I mean, both games have really nice environments, stadiums, the bikes and all of them look good. I personally liked some of the motion capture better yes. in MX Unleashed. Yeah, I love the rider models and the bike models in MX Unleashed, I think they're so well refined. And you they're can see very detailed. I mean, very you can detailed. go in and really change every element. You can change elements in MTX as well, yeah. but again, just a little bit more in Unleashed. And I really like the menus in MX Unleashed. Very I clean. thought they were very clean. What I liked about MTX, it doesn't have the rider or bike refinement that MX Unleashed has, but it has an amazing sense of speed, and I really like the right. camera. They've, they've like built in this kind of fisheye effect. What I liked in MX Unleashed, though, was the lighting and the shadow effects yes. are absolutely the environments incredible. Look really good. I mean, it really looks like, it feels like the sun is behind you. But I also found that in MX Unleashed, all of the action felt a little floatier, a little slower paced. MTX felt grittier to me. It really gave me that sense of being in the dirt with the bikes, and I love that. But I think if you had to pick the better looking game, I, I'd have to give the nod to MX Unleashed. I would as well. Okay. Now, audio wise, how do these two games stack up? Both of these games are incredibly noisy. Yeah, First well, I, I, I mean, that. I thought that they were both well done on the sound design front. Yes. But I gotta say that MX Unleashed did it absolutely perfect. What, the sound I, effects? The sound on effects the bikes? on yeah. the bikes. Yeah. Here again, both games offer awesome sound, right. but I think Got to go with MX. MX is a little bit nicer. It's so good. Most importantly, what about the gameplay for these two games? I got to tell you that once I started playing MX Unleashed, I couldn't put it down. There's online. way more tracks in MX Unleashed that come pre-built. You've got like 40-something tracks. Some are inside, some are outside. But you can create your own tracks in, in MTX. MTX. I got to say that MTX is a much 
faster game. Yes. Much more of an arcade experience, Absolutely. I and, think. And they're, they're, importantly, MTX has online play, which MX Unleashed does not. Now, you also get some cool extras in, in MX Unleashed, like you get to race like big giant uh, monster trucks. They got monster trucks, you, they have helicopters. You can fly planes. MTX. Mixes it up. You go and talk, to, like in the Tony Hawk games, you go and talk to all these pros and you go and you visit compounds and you get challenges and all these little extra Tony Hawk style interface stuff to, to, to progress through your career. One thing that MTX did better was the vibration. Yes. The force feedback. When, and when you're going, speed. When you're going on the, the hills, your controller is shaking like this, whereas in MX Unleashed, you get the jolt when you kind of hit the ground yes. and stuff. This is a really tough one, but I think I enjoyed MTX, the gameplay, more. Overall, I gotta say I like MX Unleashed better. So what would you score MX Unleashed? I'm giving it a 9. I'm gonna give it an 8. What would you score MTX Motor Tracks? MTX I would give an 8 to. I'm giving that one an 8.5. So I guess if you went by our scores and added them up, MX Unleashed wins by, by a hair. By a hair. Can't go wrong, though, with both of them. Today on the show, we took a look at Pitfall, the Lost Expedition for the GameCube. This is a very slick, cartoony, Indiana Jones platform action game, but the groups of howling monkeys are gonna drive you insane. On the PlayStation 2, we looked at Alias. This is a cool game for fans of the TV show because of the great facial textures and voice acting from the stars, but the uninterruptible motion capture animations and the constant save points get pretty tiresome. On the PC, we looked at Jack the Ripper. This game features cool ambience and voiceover acting, but there's just not enough satisfying gameplay. It's more like a radio play than a game. In Versus, we looked at MTX Motor Tracks from Activision for all three of the big platforms. This is a super fast, dirty motocross game with online play. We looked at this one against MX Unleashed from THQ for the Xbox and PlayStation 2. This game features beautiful graphics, tight physics, and lots of environments and game modes to have fun in. Tommy and I were split on both of these games, but if we had to choose one, we'd probably have to go with MX Unleashed. In hardware, we looked at the Netgear wall-plugged Ethernet bridge. This device is an excellent alternative to wireless. The only problem is, for every room you want to put online, you have to buy a new Ethernet bridge. On the Game Boy Advance, I reviewed Looney Tunes back in action. Turning Warner Brothers executives into monkeys was a cool idea, but this game is just sad and mediocre. Well, that's all the time we have for you guys today. Hope you had fun traipsing through the jungle, looking at Jennifer Garner's underpants, and being spooked by Jack the Ripper. We'll see you guys next time.